6 a.m. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Alpha. I am Roger Allen. Today I'll be talking with you on the topic, the tithe contract. But before I do so, let us pray. Father, today I come to you to share with your people what you have shared with me. I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit will lead me in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're looking today at the tithe contract. Do you remember this commitment we made when we got baptized? It is commitment number nine from our baptismal vows. And I read it for you. I believe in church organization. It is my purpose to worship God and to support the church through my tithe and offering and by personal effort and influence. All of us who were baptized in the Sunday Adventist church went through this particular contract. And we say this vow before witnesses. Today we have a contract with the Lord. And I want to share with you what the quarterly mentioned for today. It says, there is close spiritual connection between the practice of tithing and our relationship to God. And I strongly believe that it's true. The Israelites prospered where they obey God and return his tithe to him. In contrast, when they disobey God, they would not prosper and even their enemies would get the better of them. It was during one of these, these periods of unfaithfulness that God, through the prophet Malachi, proposed a bilateral contract with his people. And we can read that in Malachi chapter 7, sorry, Malachi chapter 3, 7 to 11. And I want to just share with you this morning. It said, even from the days of your fathers, he have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, say the Lord of hosts. But he said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet he have robbed me. But he said, Wherein have we robbed thee? And the Lord says, In tithe and offering, he are cursed with a curse. For he have robbed me, even thy whole nation. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, hear it, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And in verse 11, it says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, that he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, say the Lord. So, in this particular chapter, God make it clear to us that we can rob him by withholding our faithful time and offering. But not only that, he has made it clear that he will bless those who are faithful to him. But there is a curse for those who are not faithful to him. God promises the people that if they return to him, he will return to them. Now, our God is a fear God. God did never ask any of us to give to him what he did not bless us with. So if God asked us to give us a tithe, which is one-tenth of our blessing, it's because he would have blessed us with this before. God is a God who loves his people. He said when they asked what he meant by returning to him, he explicitly said, stop robbing me of tithe and offering. Today, I ask us to be faithful to God because God is coming back for a set of faithful people. And we too must be faithful in our tithe and offering. And that, my friends, is a lesson for all. Let us pray. Father, today we are happy that you have called us back to our contract with you and you promise to bless us and bless those who are faithful to you. On the other hand, God, you, you promise to curse those who are unfaithful to you. I pray today that all those who are listening to this particular episode of Alpha will be faithful to you. And Lord, we pray that you'll be merciful to us and forgive us where we have sinned against you. Dear Jesus, we give you thanks in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today for Alpha. Please join us tomorrow for another spirit-filled episode of Alpha. Until then, God bless Daily at 6 a.m.